Hello, Saints. Listen, I'm excited to a brand new show that I'm launching that is actually based upon a, a, the title of a book written by my guest today. So maybe I owe him a lot of royalties. We can discuss that after the show. But the man of God that you're about to hear from is a dear friend. And to give honor where honor is due, in my opinion, is one of the fathers of the Court of Heaven message. One of the reasons I believe a lot of ministers of the gospel don't go deeper in revelations that God wants them to grab hold of is sometimes they, they, do, they dishonor the stewards God raises to dig the revelation into a place of visibility. Coming from Africa, we don't make those, I know most Africans, we don't make those kind of mistakes. I believe in honor, because, but when you honor the source of the revelation, the channel God is using, you, God allows you to be able even to see more. So I'm very excited today. The Order of Melchizedek is my first revelation that I, that I, that I carry. I'm a steward of that revelation. And over 5,000 people have been graduated in my school on the Order of Melchizedek. But as divine destiny would have it, the Lord brought me together with a brother from another mother, uh, Dr. Robert Henderson, and my God, you know, just being around his mantle, stirred up, even a book on the court of heaven that was resident inside of me, I did not even know it was resident, but it came alive. So with that said, I want to welcome to the show, to the Operating the Courts of Heaven show, uh, Apostle Robert Henderson, man of God, welcome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's good to be with you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, my Lord, I'm telling you, uh, Robert, people are excited. We are right here. You are in our new studios. Uh, what yes. do you think of the new studios, I by the way? I think they're awesome. I was actually filming them, <laughs> sending it back to my people, because I always, I always, yes, I get, that's I always gather information. That's I always gather, good, isn't it? <laughs> I figure out what everybody else is doing, absolutely. Well, you're like me. I kind of, you know, <laughs> uh, I praise God. Amen. I'm just so excited, Robert. You know, it's an honor to have you anytime you're around our, our conferences, man. You bring so much stature and revelation to the, uh, to the platform. It's just unheard of. So I'm just honored by, by, by the humility by which you carry what the Lord has given to you. And today we're going to go through some of the books the Lord has graced you to write. Yes. But I did want to read a scripture. So for the sake of the people, mm -hmm. Robert, who could be, courts of heaven could be a new concept. Yes. You know, so I'm just assuming somebody hearing us is thinking, courts of heaven, what is that? So I just want to begin there. I'm going to read the scripture and then throw it to you okay. so that you can just, for those, and then we can go into your books. Yes. How about that? Absolutely. So Daniel chapter 7 says, says this. I, chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. So we open your Bibles. Any verse doesn't matter. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 to 10 says, I watched till thrones were put in place. And the ancient of days was seated. His garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. Now, verse 10 says, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousand ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Now check this out. The court was seated and the books were opened. The court was seated and the books were opened. And I don't, any, I don't know anybody who can explain these two scriptures better than Robert Henderson. So, Robert, I'm going to throw that to you. This is the first time I read the scripture and somebody else has to, has to manage it. So, yeah. Robert, what, tell the people what's happened. Well, I've taught on that scripture and others so much that people think that, like Kenneth Hagin used to say about Mark uh, chapter 11, he said they, think, they thought he wrote that scripture. But, but I've taught on that so much because yes. it is a scripture that God just seared yes. into my spirit. Because what it, it, it's the best place we have in scripture yes. of the revelation of the court of heaven. Yes. I always tell people, anytime they read about the throne of God in yes. scripture, they're actually reading about the court. Yes. Because out of the court of heaven or out of the throne of God, the legalities of God as judge yes. flows. And so here we see uh, Daniel, the Bible says, he said, I watched till I saw thrones put in place. So mm, Daniel is wow. stepping into yes. a spiritual dimension. A dimension. And that's the thing that people wow. don't get. They think mm. that the court of heaven Jesus. is a method of, of, of praying. It's wow. not. It is a dimension of the spirit. A dimension. And wow. see, once, and we can just move there by faith. And let me just go back to something you just said just earlier. Yes. You know, you said uh, the whole issue of honoring those who have given birth to revelation That's and right. all that, how important that is. 
here's what I've discovered, uh, uh, Apostle. I have discovered yes. that people can take a principle. That's right. And out of their gifting as a teacher or whatever, they can take that principle and they can begin to, to share it. But here's the issue. If they don't honor where it came from, That's it's right. very unlikely they're going to carry an authority in it. Behind it, exactly. That's exactly. See, the wow. Bible says of Jesus wow. that yes. he taught as one having Jesus. authority. Yes. That was, that was what set him apart from all the other teachers. Yes. It wasn't just what he was teaching. It was the authority that, that he carried. He and so if we, you can know principles and yes. you can teach principles. That's right. On the court of heaven or any other thing. Yes. But that's completely Jesus. different from carrying an authority, authority to function there. That's right. To step into that realm and actually see breakthrough come. Exactly. Because I watch people running, not just the court of heaven, but a lot of different messages. That's right. Running to these different messages. But the, but the question is, is there an authority that is resident in those who are delivering the message that's going to actually let them get their breakthrough? You, you know, uh, Apostle, what you're saying is very powerful. I, 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 I want to piggyback on it because I had a guy in Austin, Texas, who came to the school on the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. He had never, when he came, he's telling me in a, you know, in between sessions, you know, when it's a school. So you have a sessions. Between sessions, he's like, I've never had anything like this. Mm -hmm. Well, a month later, he began his own Melchizedek network. <laughs> And school, and then be, when people ask him, oh, did you get this? Did, have, you, have you heard of Dr. Mouse? He says, yes, I've heard of him, but what I have is my own revelation. Mm -hmm. He did a school in one city, and it collapsed. Yes. It completely dried up because he dishonored what he told me by his own mouth. I've never heard this before. <laughs> you know, uh, Dr. Mouse, can I run with it? And I said, yes, but he refused to honor. When somebody asked him, mm -hmm. and then one of the people asked him, you know, actually knew me. Mm -hmm. And it is, is an apostolic leader in the body of That's Christ, right. you know, and, uh, he, you know, let me know, hey, this guy is, is actually, so I was surprised, he, he just refused to say, but I know he got it from you, but he's acting like he did not, but he did never go anywhere. I don't even know where that guy is today. That's it's right. all gone. And it hurts you because when you are a steward of a revelation, you want many to carry it. That's right. But to have authority, you can't violate the grace because God doesn't work against himself. That's he exactly builds right. upon himself. That's exactly right. See, see, this is what I tell people. Yes. In, in regards to the court of heaven. That's right. And that whole, everybody can function there. I just want all the, all the, uh, the people that are watching this to know, you can go into the court of heaven. That's they right. They can go in and they can function. Because the blood of Jesus yes. gives us access to all these dimensions. Yes. See, I mean, I don't care what dimension it is. The, the secret place My or God. the council of the Lord Jesus. or whatever it may be. The court of heaven is another dimension. Wow. Everybody, as we as believers, as New Testament believers, yes. this is why this is why Acts 2 is so important. Yes. They need, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. Your sons and your, your daughters are prophesied. That's right. Your old men will dream dreams. See, what he was saying was that which has been restricted yes. to just prophets in the Old Testament is now made accessible wow. to everybody in to the a New. a lot more people. Come that, on, that's somebody. That's right. So every, all of us as New Testament Jesus. believers, we have access into these dimensions. Dimensions. That's right. Now, having said that, having said that, yes, the truth is, is that you can have access into a dimension and you can function in behalf of yourself. That's right. In behalf of your family. But if you're going to carry an authority that's actually going to bring Jesus. breakthrough beyond that, mm. um, uh, beyond those dimensions, you have to have a status in heaven. This is what, what I tell people. Status. See, see. Come see, on. See. Hebrews eleven thirty nine. Yes, it says that all these ones that he was talking about, all yes. what we call the Hall of Fame of Faith. Yes, all of these. He said, he said all of these received a good report. A good report. And see, here's what that means. That means they had a status in heaven. Oh my God. That, that means they carried an authority, a realm. See, but and watch, you don't have to be dead to carry a status in heaven. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, God needs good. some people in the in that are yet in the earth realm Jesus. that He can trust a dimension uh, uh, in, in, in a realm of authority to, to that whenever they step into the courts, heaven pays attention. Wow. Heaven pays attention, and they can uh, they can actually function yes. at times on a higher level in the court of heaven than than others, whether they're teaching it yes. or whether they're just starting. Now, again, everybody can move into the court. Yeah. But God says, if you have a status before me, my God, and see, this is what Luke eighteen says. Yes. 
See, my whole teaching on the three dimensions of prayer yes. on that Jesus revealed in the book of Luke of, of approaching God to the Father as a friend, yes. but then in Luke 18 as a judge. Yes. Well, this is the thing that stood out to me. Yes. The Bible says that, that, that Jesus, when he told the parable about the widow who got a verdict from an unjust judge, he wasn't saying that Jesus or God is an unjust judge we have to convince. He was saying if this widow... My could Lord. get a verdict from an unjust, a ver judge. an unjust judge. How much more can we step into the judicial system of heaven, the court of heaven, and get decisions rendered in our behalf? And here's what he said. He said, how much more will God avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night? Yes, I say he will avenge them speedily. So watch, he says, literally answers can happen instantaneously. Wow. So I was looking at that, and I was thinking, okay, what's the deal here? He says, <laughs> they cry out day and night, day and night yes. but they get answers speedily. It doesn't, that, that seems contradictory. Yes. That day and night means they've been doing this for a long time, it's, you know, that, for, for wow. a, a, a lengthy time. Yes. But yet they get it speedily. And the Lord said, no, you're misunderstanding. Here's what he said to me. Yes. He said, if you are one that has been before me consistently day and night, yes. you, have been, you have a history with me. You, watch this. You have a prayer life. He said, wow. when you discover the court of heaven and you step into that dimension, your status you have gained with me by being before me all the time, that, that status comes with you. That, and, and, and there will be whoa, instantaneous, speedy breakthroughs that, that is can occur. amazing. That, oh boy, my Lord, I have, Robert, I've read uh, Luke 18 that you're referring to so many times. And, 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 you know, it's just very interesting. The other day I was reading that very, very, very portion of Scripture, and the day and night stood out to me. And I yep. said, mm, the day and night, but I never saw that aspect. But I believe God was preparing me yep. for what you're saying. <laughs> because you're right. We, what you are saying, essentially, Robert, is because the court of heaven is a dimension. Yes. It means God is faithful enough to know that if you've been faithful in other realms of seeking God. That's right. He does not negate that sacrifice when you discover the court of heaven. Absolutely. So it Absolutely. actually adds to it. It brings you into it. Wow. You get credit for all that waiting on God. See, I, I, that it, is it took me a while. It took me a wow. while to that figure that out. And I felt like God said it to me. The other little piece of that, by yes. the way, before I say this, is that he said, how much more will God avenge his own elect? Let. You see, the court of heaven yes. is where the chosen of God come before him. My See, pe pe I've heard people say to me, I don't want to go before the court. I don't want to stand before a judge. I said, oh, but you don't understand. I said, it's fixed to your benefit. Yes. I said, because God said, I'm looking for a legal reason to avenge those who belong to, to me. me. Wow. If you'll just come and present your case oh, before me, stuff. I will render judgments yeah. against powers of darkness, yes. against principalities. That's right. I will render judgments against all the things that are trying to resist you and my will through you. Yes. I'll render judgments against that so that, so that you as my elect, the ones my that God. I've chosen, you actually can come and see the breakthroughs that you desire occur. Now, I was actually, when I first stepped into the court, I mean, the first time, the first time I stepped into the courts, someone was helping me. I didn't know what I was doing. Yes. And, and my, the breakthrough was instant. I mean, instant. instantaneously. Jesus. It happened instant. I mean, everything shifted in a moment. Wow. Now, what happened was <laughs> the legal right of the enemy was removed, and yes. then a, 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 a period of restoration occurred oh, where that God began to restore to me Jesus. everything that had been lost plus more. Plus but, more. But, but he could do that because the legal claim of the enemy against me had been revoked and been removed. Wow. So I remember I went back to these people, and I actually went back to these people and began to teach. And the lady said to me after I got through, she said, you make me feel like a fool. And I said, I mean, it, I was, it disturbed me when she said that. I said, why? And she said, because you're giving us language for something we've been doing for 20 years but couldn't explain. Wow. Because that's what the Lord did. He opened because the my grace, spirit. Yes. yes. The I, grace was given to you. That's you see, right. This is what I know. Like, I noticed, Robert, when grace is given to a man, even the language to communicate that grace. Absolutely. That's how you know. You, you see, you, you can say, well, I touched the court of heaven there. I mean, I knew it 30 years ago. <laughs> but the reason why it was not a global message is because even though you had a glimpse of it, see, people may make a mistake between the, a glimpse of grace and being given a stewardship of a grace. Very good. So even though the people that took you in the court of heaven had a glimpse of the grace, That's right. the stewardship of it mm -hmm. was not given to them. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. But as soon as you touched it, they heard what they never heard. The administration and the communication 
of that grace. That's right. They they knew things by the Spirit, but wow. could not Explain verbally it. communicate wow. it. It was it was it, it, for, and it's you're all right. It was because of uh, of the grace that yes. had been given that that for whatever reason God yes. gave me. You know, let me just say this. I mean, I could talk about all things for all, a long time, but but. In Isaiah chapter 6, yes. Isaiah is before the Lord. Uh -huh. and he, I love he, that he's, chapter, I know, by the he's, way. He, he's before the glory of God, yes. and he's, he begins to see how undone he is. And it literally, that word literally means, I'm so wicked, I should be destroyed. That's what wow. it means. Wow, undone. That's what it means. I am means. so wicked, yeah. I should be destroyed. I mean, he is. Is that humbling? Yes. I mean, everybody needs to feel like this that before God. This is a prophet God. of God. He's wow. only functioning as a prophet of God. I'm so wicked, I should be destroyed. And the, the seraphim flies, gets the coal, touches his lips, purifies his, his, his iniquity, his sin. But then he hears the Lord saying, here's what he said. He hears wow. the Lord saying, who, who can we send who will go for us? And Isaiah says, here am I, send me. And we know that God chose him. So watch this. From the council of the Lord, because that's where Isaiah was standing. From the council of the Lord. He was standing in the, the council, council of, of the Lord. Lord. He was in that wow. dimension of the spirit, which is a little different than the courts. Yes. I mean, and we won't go into that. But, but the bottom line is a little different. So he's standing in the council, and, and he hears the Lord. He's, he volunteers, said, here am I, send me. The Lord says, tells him, you'll go, go. And then he gives him the message he is to carry. See, this is what I believe. Wow. I believe God gives messages to people that they are to carry, that yes, they are chosen been, by God mm, out of the counsel of the Lord. Yes. And from that place, God says, okay, this one will go, and this is the message they will carry. Wow. And I have just this sense that God committed to me the court of heaven message, and he said, and that's why I've been teaching it almost nonstop for 10 plus years. People say, don't you get tired of teaching it? I said, not really. Not when you have the grace. That's right. I have had people tell me about the order of like, Don't you get tired? Over 5,000 students that you have graduated, hours and hours of the same modules. I said, but the grace is different for every module. Absolutely. And the crowd is different. The dynamics are different. The miracles are different. I said, I don't know how you get, how you get tired of what something God gave you. You know, that is amazing. Now, Robert, there's uh, two things be before, because uh, I want to get to your books. But uh, there's two things in, the, in, in Daniel 7 that I would still want you to, to, to explain too, too quickly. There's two expressions. The last two expressions in verse 10. The court was seated and the books were opened. Those two things. Yep. Please talk to us about it. Yeah. The, okay, so Daniel is seeing. He is, yes. He's being allowed to see all this procedure going That's on. That's right. So as he's watching this happen, he sees the court... Uh, and that's made up of God, the judge of all, the ancient of days, the angelic beings, yes. the cloud of witnesses, all these I different entities uh, spirit in the spiritual realm. It says, it says the, the, uh, the court is seated. Now, mm. in a natural, wow. when you go into a court yes. and the court is seated, that means it's ready to hear a case. Wow, that's That powerful. means it's now they, come to order whoa, and it's hallelujah. ready to hear Hora the case. Ba, 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 so, it says the court mm. was seated and then it says the books were open. Well, yes. see, this is where people kind of get messed up sometimes because yes. there are many different books in heaven. That's right. There's books of destiny. There's books of life. There's wow. books of remembrance. Yes. You know, there's prophetic books. Yes. There's books that prophets receive for nations yes. and all sorts of things. So there's a lot of different books in heaven. So it says books, plural. Yes. It says the court is seated, the books are why? Because the cases that are going to be presented are going to come out of those books. Wow. See, you can't powerful. just go to the court and do anything you want. Yes. It's, it's, you it's, have to present cases out of the books. And that this is, is what that means. That is very powerful. You have to have a prophetic discernment of what's in those books. That is. So that you can present cases in agreement with the purposes of God. God. In agreement. And yes. that's what it is. So it's not a just it's not a court of heaven that is designed to save your flesh. That's it right. is designed to align you up with the purpose of God. That's right. So that is powerful. So I come and I say, okay, there's a Psalms 139, 16. It says yes. every one of us has a book in heaven. Yes. My days yet in form, my, sub, mm. my, my substance yet in form, my days yet in fashion. That's what he says. So that means my destiny, my kingdom reason for being alive. So I come and I say, okay, God, I understand prophetically this is what I'm supposed to be accomplishing. So I bring that as a case before the Lord. Yes. Now, I, I know that because the books are open. You see, this is what the people can't get. The court is seated and the books are open. That means sometimes the books are closed. Mm. Isaiah 29 yes. says that prophets wow. couldn't see and seers could not perceive. Why? It says because the books were closed. Wow. 
See, because prophets, in other words, there is no prophetic understanding. There is no prophetic unction if books are closed. So what opens books? What, it says the court is seated, the books are open. You've got to have an open book to present a case in the Lord uh, or in the courts. And so I tell people, I said, you, got, you, you must have done the things that you needed to do yes. to get your books open. My so God. that you can present cases about wow. yourself, about your family. That is Listen, powerful. you don't just come into the courts and tell God, oh, God, I need this, I need this, I need... No, you come into the courts and say, God, you called me to this. You made me for this. Wow. You made me to preach the gospel. You said to me, you will disciple nations. These are things I've heard. So I bring wow. that, and I brought that before the courts. I say, now, God, let what you have said, let that become reality, because I have had a glimpse, at wow. least, into my book, book in heaven, because it's Open. It's but open. see what you got you gotta know how to get those books open. Sometimes people have no prophetic understanding about their own life because they haven't got their book open yet. Wow, that's so powerful. My look well, with that, <laughs> we go into the books that have been open already. Yes, absolutely. Because I believe one of the ways God op helps people open their books is his anoints stewards of grace on that revelation. Yes. Like yourself. Myself and others that are beginning to run with you in this track on the court mm -hmm. of heaven. And our books are helping people connect to their books in heaven. Right. That's right. You know? That's right. Because, you know, I, I, I mean, you, you know what, what happened to Daniel when he read the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. or the, I mean, the prophecy of uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah yep. It caused him to begin to pray and, and fast in Babylon because he knew time, the time had come. Seven years and no more. Mm -hmm. It was the books Amen. that allowed him. To be able to come in that dimension of, of, of uh, intercession yes. for the nation of Israel. L let, me, let me give you a scripture yes. for that about, about literal books yes. being written. In 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 3, yes. the apostle Paul says, you are our epistles. He's talking to the Corinthian church. You are. He said, he said, literally, I have written upon your hearts. Karama. He said, he said, he said, you know, I've written something on your hearts yes. as an apostle. Yes. So now, obviously, Paul didn't literally write something on somebody's heart, but that he meant the revelation he had carried. Whoa, he, it, had, it had been written into their hearts. Come on. Okay, so so Paul, as an apostle, would not have written something on their hearts different from that which was written in their books in heaven. Wow. See, he, he as an apostle would have been able to unlock something yes. in their hearts that they would begin to understand more efficiently what was written in the books of heaven about, about them. them. So one of the best ways, one of the best ways to get Jeez. your books unlocked is get apostolically connected and read the books and the revelation that that apostle is releasing. Wow, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, 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 Apostle Henderson, you have released several books here, and so I'm going to go through them, just give you a time. So if you can just maybe spend like, uh, you, know, uh, you know, take four minutes on each okay. book, you know, just tell us why, because I think from this show, what I want to accomplish, I want to get anybody who may be saying to the mouse, I know about the Court of Heaven, I know Apostle Robert Henderson, I know your staff on the Court of Heaven, thank you for what you guys are doing Oh, but you might be saying, my God, this is new for me. This could be the answer to what I've been dealing with, the struggles I'm going through. This could be the end, the invisible shadow boxing, as most people are doing, because what you're fighting has legal rights in the courts to, to punch you out, and that's mm -hmm. why it's still there, no matter your cries to the Lord. You know, and so I'm going to give you the opportunity to get this box. You know, goodness is that uh, both me and uh, Robert Henderson are with the same publisher, so getting this book should not be difficult, and I'm sure Robert will speak into that. So, Robert, with that said, I, but I, I've read this, but for yeah. the sake of the people, unlocking destinies from the courts of the heaven, uh, dissolving curses that delay and deny our future. So I'm asking the author right in front of me, why did you feel this was necessary to the body? This, this book. Yes, this is the second book destinies. I wrote on the court of heaven. The yes. first one is Operating in the Courts of Heaven. That's it. That's the first that's one. That's the mother book. Okay, that's the mother book. And that one's still, like, it's just it's <laughs> over a million copies worldwide. Come on. Sold. I mean, just, um, I, mean, I don't even know how many it sold. But, <laughs> but ju it's just, it just had a tremendous effect, but an impact. But that book, the first one, was actually much more mystical. Yes. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. Yes. I mean, I still stand by it. I believe in everything I taught in it. Everything is still something we need to embrace. But 
This book, I tried to bring it much more into a practicality. Yes. Uh, in, in other words, how to unlock what God built you for. In other wow. words, your destiny, your purpose, you know, mm. all the issues that are resisting it. And not just the, not yes. just individuals, but family members, you know, all these kind of things. For instance, I had to go into the courts in behalf, well, I've been into the courts in behalf of my all of my children. But the first one I did was my son, Adam. I and I went into the courts Jesus. and I dealt with a legal case that the enemy had against Against Adam, I mean, it broke immediately. He said, he wow. told me, he called me a week and a half after I had done that. He said, God, he said, Dad, I don't know what happened. But a week and a half ago, all the depression, everything left me. Wow. I'm now ready to go after God. Come he on. is doing an Hallelujah. amazing <laughs> work of God right now. Praise he Jesus. Is a huge, he's, he's, he took a church of five in a town of 3,500. It's now well over 300. My and God. Plus, they've given him another uh, facility to, for, to, to launch churches with in another city that's nearby. And he has just such grace and favor. He's living out the destiny written in his book. But it would never have happened if I had not known how to go into the court of heaven and secure his destiny. Because he didn't know anything about this. Wow. But, but God unveiled it. And so I went into the court and I dealt with the legal issues that was holding back his destiny. And all those principles are in that book. My God. Un unlocking destinies from the courts of heaven. Listen, it's worked. I mean, it doesn't get better than working, working for your own son. Yeah. And you know the only reason why your son is free and doing well is because of the revelation that is in this book. So you can get this book, Unlocking Destinies from the Courts of Heaven. Now, Robert, you know, just since we're on the Facebook, uh, where, where, where are your books available? Let well, there, of course, you, as you said, we all publish through Destiny Image, and you can get them there. But my own website is robertHenderson.org. Just yes. my name, .org. RobertHenderson.org. Oh, yeah, O-R-G. Yes, yep. so his name, dot O-R-G, and this books can be yours. Yes, absolutely. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. And then, of course, Amazon, too. You yeah, know, absolutely. Because you're a big over. author. So. I, always say, I always want to say, anywhere fine books are sold. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I remember, because that's a funny one. I remember I was, I was in Nigeria, and, and I'm in this car, and uh, these guys will sell books. And you know I'm from America. These were books for American authors. Yes. And I'm looking at the covers. I know that original book in America. That's not the cover of the... He probably does not even know. <laughs> Absolutely. We have, we have had stories from other countries where they have taken just what you just said and put their own cover and sold it for themselves with a different name. With a, with different, a name. different name. I mean, somebody else wrote it. <laughs> It's true. Don't get any ideas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you, want, you don't want the devil to bind you in the That's court That's right. Of Absolutely. So, man of God, this one. Man, Robert, I really feel with this one at the end of, the, at the end of our broadcast, you should, we, should, we need to activate this one because I think this is a big deal in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. There's tremendous sickness in the body of Christ, even though Jesus paid for us for the healing of the body mm -hmm. on the cross. I mean, it's a finished work, but there's a lot of disease in the body of Christ. So, here's the issue. It's receiving healing from the courts of heaven. I know we've, we've, we, the church has experienced the amazing healing movement. You know, mm -hmm. the healing, we had the healing revivals, the Jackie Coles, the A. Mm -hmm. Allen's, you know, the Brenham Brenham, the Oral Roberts. They did their best, and we saw millions of people getting healed. Mm -hmm. But yet, even in their generation, I'm believing that there was healings they could have seen had they had this level. Don't you think so? I, I agree. I think there are healings that they could have had if they knew about how to unlock those healings That's right. from the court of heaven. That's right. So this book is called Receiving Healing from the Courts of Heaven. Why did Robert Anderson write this book? Yeah, th this book, I have functioned in healing for a number of years. In fact, whenever I first stopped pastoring and yes. began to travel, like almost 15 years ago now, yes. I thought that I was going to be a healing revivalist. I thought that's what I was going to do because we were functioning at such a significant level in that area. Well, about... About as I got into it, then I began to shift really strongly into the apostolic. And then three years into it, the whole revelation of the court of heaven came. Yes. Well, I always knew mm. that, the, that the court of heaven and healing had a connection. Got a connection. I had, there was a connection. Yes. There. Because as, as one that has prayed for many, many, many people sick and yes. have seen many healed, but seen some not healed. Yes. And even seen some die. And I always tell people, I said, don't let anybody tell you that functions in healing. They've never seen anybody die. I said, if you've been doing it for any length of time, you've had some tremendous successes, but you've also had some glorious failures. Wow. Well, here's what I discovered. Here's what I feel like I've discovered. And I don't claim to have all the answers, but I will say this. 
that, that I believe that the reason many, many, many people are not healed is not because wow. God hasn't heard them, Come on. God doesn't love them, God, God doesn't care for them, or that all that Jesus did on the cross is yes. not a sufficient thing. Yes. I don't believe I believe all of that is, is working in their behalf. But the reason they're not healed is because the enemy has a legal case against them. Against them. And see, or their bloodline. Uh, in their bloodline, yeah. Yes. In, 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 in wow. their lives or in their bloodline. For instance, th there's about four distinct places in, in the New Testament where you see Jesus clearly, clearly. deal with e legal issues so wow. he could bring healing to the person. So he could bring healing. The, the first that one is, is in Luke 13, uh -huh. where that a woman was bent over for 18 years. For 18 years, yes. And, and the scripture says that when Jesus looked at her, he had compassion. Yes. And this is what he said. He said, woman, you are loosed. Yes. And because that word is the Greek word apoluo, and it means to make a, di a divorce decree. Wow. It means to um, to um, cancel a contract. Mm -hmm. it, it's all legal issues. Yes. It, it's, it's all, in, in yeah, other it's words, all, it's, yes. it's, it's And so when he said, woman, you are loosed, what he declared was that the legal right the enemy had used for 18 years to hold her in that condition was now removed. And then the scripture says, he said, woman, you're loosed, but she's still bent over. So what did he do? He, she bent over and he says, so Jesus touched her. Wow. So whenever he touched her, he released the anointing that actually was now free to accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish, which is to bring healing. Wow. See, see, I, I, I cannot tell you how many people I've prayed for where visibly they would be touched by the anointing. They would, they would get hot. Mm. They would shake. The power of God would come up. And yet when it was all said and done, they were still sick. So what you are saying, Robert, that the anointing does not violate, the, the anointing does not, will not violate a legitimate legal right Satan has that's before the court. That's right. It cannot. Wow. It cannot. See, that is see, Jesus dealt with the legal. He said, he said, I issue a divorce decree against that thing that has claimed the legal right to hold you. It no longer has that right. That's what he meant when he said, Apollo, you are loosed. But <laughs> then he touched her. Then he, he touched, touched her. her. Now, I tell people this, because I do believe this is true, is that, is that, you can deal with the legal rights. Yes. But you've got to have a substantial enough of anointing Jesus. to bring healing in that situation. My God. Because 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 we say, well, you know, God can do anything. Well, yeah, he can, but healing a headache is different than healing somebody that has a broken spine that's in a wheelchair. Yes. You've got to have a substantial level of anointing that is being carried. Jesus. So you can deal with the legal issue, wow. but then you've got to release. Now, now, sometimes what you need to do in those situations is you need to pray more than once. My that's God. what Jesus did. Even Jesus did this. Yes. He prayed for a man. He, that was blind. He saw all men as trees. He prayed for him the second time. His vision was completely clear. But it took two times for the releasing of the anointing. In, in other words, he, he, and John G. Lake understood this principle. He talked about how he actually talked about this, how that the substance of the anointing, that, that Jesus carried the spirit without measure. Well, wow. we don't. We don't as individuals. Yes. But watch this. I'm not saying that we can't, but we don't. Yes. Okay. So, so he said the same level of anointing Jesus could re release in one touch, it may take us five releases to, to equal that same thing. Jesus. So, And that was the whole issue of John G. Lake. He would send his disciples out from the healing rooms, and he would say, don't come back until they're healed. Because they understood you go, they may not have used this language, but you go deal with the legal issue that could be holding them in this sickness. You get that dealt with, then you release the anointing until they're made completely well. Wow, that is amazing. Well, listen, receiving healing, you can receive healing from the court of heaven. Get this book, I mean, it's loaded, and you may know somebody that really needs to get healed. Now, this book, you did an amazing teaching when we were together in Alabama. Yeah. But just touch on this a little bit. My God. And I think this is going to really touch for some of you who have lost loved ones. You know, I, I really you, I hate using the word lost mm -hmm. loved ones when they're dealing with kingdom people. Right. Because we don't lose. That's we right. transition. You know, but the cloud of witnesses, the cloud of witnesses in the courts of heaven is another one of your book. You know, and it says, partnering with the council of heaven for personal and kingdom breakthrough, please tell us, why did you, from your busy schedule, which is very, very busy, <laughs> take a time to write a book on the cloud of witnesses? Well, I found out after I wrote it that the publisher, Destiny, told me this is the only book on the cloud of witnesses. 
She, wow. They said, they said, they said nobody else, because people have been afraid of it. You've been afraid of They've it. been afraid of the cloud of witnesses. Here's why. Wow. They, they, some actually in secret believe in this. Yes. I mean, it's biblical, but they're afraid to share it for afraid of the way people will perceive them. Exactly. And so, so they don't talk about it. Now it's wow. getting, now we're getting, we're coming, we're coming yes. through some of that and people are talking more about this. Yes. But I wrote the book because notice it called the, the, the ones that have gone on to be with the Lord. Yes. That are, that are now in the heavenly realm. Jesus. They are called the cloud of, of witnesses. Wit and yes. that word witness means uh, to give judicial testimony. Wow, that's it. So we know that the court system of America, that's right. Where that's right. witness is really more judicial than church. That's right. Yes. That's right. And so that's exactly right. So these these witnesses are a, they carry a dimension of authority. Remember Hebrews eleven uh, yes. thirty nine. Yes. It says these all received a, a good, good report. report. They have a sense. So, so the, 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 the people have to understand. Not everybody that dies and goes to heaven yes. is in the cloud of witnesses. Because you, See, ha you have to have a status. You, that's you, right. You, you, in other words, what you're saying is that, uh, yes, there's many. They, 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 in, essentially, they gen there are many in the general assembly. That's right. But in that general assembly, according to Hebrews 12, there is a cloud of witnesses that's right. who have stature that, uh, th that they can give witness to destinies because they also walked out there as with a heavy price, some of them that's they right. paid. That's very, very, go ahead. And, 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 and that's exactly right. And so, so um, these are those, the word witness there actually means, in wow. Hebrews 12, it actually means not only those who give judicial testimony, but it means those who laid their lives down. Wow. That's the, what the word witness, I mean, when Jesus said, you will be my witnesses, it means you'll be my martyrs. Now, that doesn't mean you have to die physically for the cause of the Lord. Yes. But it does mean you have to be willing to lay your own agenda down to fulfill his will. Wow. And whoever does that qualifies in the life to come to step into and be a part of the cloud of witnesses. If we have habitually said, I want the will of God more than I want my own my own desires, my wow. own wants. I want to fulfill Jesus. what God has said that I'm supposed to do. Then then whenever those people pass from this life into the next, they actually are part of the cloud of witnesses. When I do funerals, I've had to do several funerals recently. When I do funerals, I tell people, because I'll, I'll hear those who get up before me. Oh, he, that one was such a good person. They were, they, they were such good people. They, it's such a good individual. And they always refer to them in the past tense. Yes. And I said, why do we do that? Wow. I said, they're not something that was, they're something that still is. Yes. I said, they are yet alive. They're just in a different dimension. dimension. So, so like I had to do my, the, the wow. funeral for my brother-in-law, a godly man, a godly man. The guy that got, me, got up before me, oh, Richard was such a good. I said, no, Richard is such a great guy. I said, he's wow. just in another dimension. I that said, you need to stop thinking about him as something that wasn't. I Come said, on. watch, they are, they are present day yet alive. And I love what somebody said. They're not in our past. They are yet in our future. Wow. Since here's what Robert, is, Robert is, is trying to communicate. You know, just listen. Jesus said, I'm not the God of the dead, but of the living. That's right. He said that. Okay. The only funeral on earth is people that die without Christ. They are not part of the cut of witnesses. They're in a place of damnation. But we are talking about people that die in the Lord. The Bible is very clear. They are, they, 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 the Bible is very clear that these people that die in the Lord just transition because to be absent with the body is to be present yes. with the Lord. How can you be present with the Lord and be dead? So they are alive. Robert, this is why I believe, would you say this is, this is part of the, uh, um, uh, Jesus was opening the realm of the cloud of witnesses when he, allowed, when he went to the mountain and allowed the Peter, James, and John to experience Elijah yes. and, and Moses talk to Jesus who had long yep. gone from the earth. That's right. See, see I, I, I touch about all this in this book. Yes. Because in every place, like when Jesus, what happened? Yes. He sees uh, Elijah and Moses. They're talking to them. They, yes. They're already in the heavenly realm. Yes. Okay. The Bible then says a cloud came and overshadowed them. Wow. Now, I got to tell a real quick story. Anytime you read about the cloud, yes. you potentially could be reading about the cloud of witnesses. Yes. It's not just the glory cloud of Come God. On. It's the cloud yes. that the witnesses themselves are, are part, part of and are in. Yes. Okay. My son, Adam, that I mentioned earlier, yes. this is such a fantastic story. Um, um, on an Easter service, he was leading his church. 
and he I, he called me after Easter service, and I said, so I said, how things go, Adam? He said, it was great, Dad. He said, he said, but you know, he said the Lord spoke to me before the service that morning and told me that Mama, my mom, yes. his grandmother, Mama, yes. would be would was going to be there today. He said wow. the Lord said that to me, and 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 um and I said, really. Well, see, here's the deal. Mamaw's been dead for 10 years. Wow. I mean, as far as in the earth. In, in the know. earth, yes. So, so he said, God said that Mamaw would be here. And he said, you know, that was really a neat word and, and so forth. And then he said, but you know what happened, Dad? He said, he said when the services were going in, he said, this cloud came in. Wow. This cloud came into the service. And I said, Adam, that was the cloud of witnesses. I said, Mamaw wow. was in that cloud. I said, God told you beforehand she was going to be here, but then that cloud that rolled in, which we've had that cloud in our meetings as well. I, have, as I have had that cloud in my meetings. Yeah, that's the cloud wow. of witnesses. They are. I, I'm, I'm not saying it's not the manifest glory and presence of God, but it's the cloud of witnesses that are a part of that. And, and they are coming in, and wow. they are giving testimony and witness and, and affirming uh, you know, our purpose and what we're doing in God. Wow, wow. Well, listen, you know, we got uh, two more books left here. Okay. Prayers and declarations from the court of heaven. I can already see that this is, uh, this is about prayers. Now, this is actually, so I'm sure you, what was your motivation uh, for writing prayers and declarations from the court of heaven, Apostle? These, th these prayers and declarations, they cover certain segments. Like yes. there's one on dealing with your bloodline. Oh, wow. There's That's one good. on dealing with... Uh, your marriage, with your children. There's oh, one on dealing man. with your finances. You need to get this There's right one now. on dealing with reformation of culture, how yes. to pray into the seven mountains. Wow. Uh, I wrote chapters on each one of those and many other things, and then prayers associated with how to address those issues yes. from a court of heaven perspective. That is very good. And so that's the reason for this book, and that has been a very, very popular book. No, I can see that. I mean, I mean this is book I just... Every time I see on Amazon, I just keep seeing see the ratings going, yeah. going up. Because that's how you know in Amazon, people are eating it up. So basically what you're saying, this is a prayer book, a very practical yes. prayer book. Yes, In the court of I, I was actually on a Zoom call with some guys from Asia. Yes. And they were asking me, well, how do, you, how do you do this and how do you... Somebody on the Zoom call pulled the book out and said, well, here, he talks about this right here. He said, this is... And they were using that. They were actually using that to help instruct others in how to go into the courts of heaven concerning certain issues. Wow, that's amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, finally, you know, before I have you pray for people uh, in this healing from the court of heaven, man of God, I, I, I want to talk about this book that you, you know, that uh, you, you, you co-wrote with me. You wrote the first chapter. I did the rest. Uh, the book is called Issuing Divine Restraining Orders from the Courts of Heaven. And I could not have been more honored than to have this apostle of the Court of Heaven write the first chapter of my book. You know, and that's how much I respect him and what he has carried for the body of Christ. But man of God, this revelation on issuing divine restraining orders from the Courts of Heaven, you know, as uh, one who's been given the stewardship of this message, uh, how have you felt to see this piece added to the board of, body of, of, uh, of Revelation? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, you, you cover certain issues in this book, I mean, from a restraining order perspective, yes. which obviously the word restraining order is a very legal term. That's right. A restraining or a protective order. You know, I don't know a culture of the world that I've been <laughs> in that they don't have this. That's right. They, I mean, in the natural, they have restraining protective orders that can be said. I was actually in Alabama, yes. and a Supreme Court justice from that state came to me because I was actually teaching on restraining orders. Come on. And, and he said to me, he said, <laughs> he said, he said, you know, he said, watch this. He said, a restraining order is only a piece of paper. Jesus. He said, that's all it is in the natural. Yes. He said this, and this was a Supreme Court judge. Yes. He said, it's only, a, it's only, he said, but if someone violates that, all the person that has that restraining order, all they have to do is, is call the police. They show up and they say, here is the paper that says this person cannot come near me. Wow. And, and he said that paper, even though it's just a piece of paper, carries all unbelievable authority to, wow. to create a protective zone yeah. around a person. So I know that you deal with that. I also know that you deal with the whole issue yes. of how we have to live under the restraints of God. I, exactly. That out of Jesus. that we carry an authority. And you Jesus. shared that in a conference I was with you yes. when you were yet living in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Yes. And I'm telling you, when you shared that, 
and you actually said some things over me prophetically, yes. it radically shifted my life. Come on. Because, because I became aware yes. that I operated as a judge in the, courts. in the courts of heaven that could set in place restraining orders. Because, on behalf of people. On, on behalf of people. On be behalf of the court of heaven. Yes, because yes. we are living under the restraints of God ourselves. Exactly. And it was such wow. a revelation Jesus. that when anybody, yes. and this is one of the ways, uh, uh, Dr. Miles, that many people can get that status in heaven. Come on. Come it's under live restraints under of strength. heaven. That's right. This they is can powerful. have a status that will let them operate in this yes. area. Wow, wow. So, you know what, Robert, you are so right. If people don't live under divine restraint, how can you, if God cannot restrain you, how can you have stature in his court? That's right. You see, because the enemy would have would have big dose of accusation. That's right. He'll be like, God, you're gonna you can make this guy come and break this. You can't make this guy come after me in the court. You can't even restrain him in life. But when we live under this divine restraint, yes. we carry a status in the court of heaven. That's right. And it's amazing things what we can do. Man of God, listen, I want you to look in the camera as we come to the end of this apostle, because I want you to release healing. Okay. I really believe you need to release healing from the court of heaven. You know, praise God. So Amen. You can look in, the, in your camera and Amen. then just uh, pray for our viewers. You know, when I talk about mm. in this book, I talk about the fact oh, of, 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 of there, there can be in your bloodline. You Because some of you don't understand why you can't get healed. It, it's not because you don't have faith. It's not because yes. God doesn't love you or the work of Jesus is not efficient or effective for you. Watch it. It's because somewhere in your bloodline, there was a covenant that was made with demon powers. Yes. Isaiah 28 talks about this. That somebody in your history, in your ancestry, made a covenant. That covenant, uh, what, what that does is it then creates ownership. Okay, that covenant allows the enemy to say, mm. this line, this family line, this lineage belongs to me. So therefore, because it now belongs to me, I have a right to afflict it anyway. So what I want to do is I want to help you break that covenant. Yes. So, Lord, right now as we come before your presence. Yes, Lord. Lord, I want to remind your, your, the, you, you in your courts, Lord, that even with the widow or even the, with the woman that was yes. bent over for all of these years, Lord, you loosed her. Yes, Lord. You made a decree that caused every legal claim of the enemy to be revoked. Yes, I'm Lord. asking from the court that there would be now a revoking of legal claims that is being used to hold your people in sickness, in disease, and in any form of bondage. And Lord, those claims so often are because covenants have been created. Yes. So right now, I want those Rabbi that are watching, I want you to say this. Yes. Lord, as I stand before your courts. Lord, as I stand before your courts. I repent. I repent. In behalf of myself. In behalf of myself. And anything in my bloodline. And anything in my bloodline. For any covenant. For any covenant. And agreement. And agreement. That was made with demon power. That was made with demon powers. Lord, I say before you. I say before I you. I want nothing to do with that. I, I want nothing to do with that. I would remind the courts. I would remind the court. I am bought by the blood of Jesus. I'm bought by the blood of Jesus. He is the one that owns me. He is the one that owns so me. So Lord, now. So Lord, now. Let this covenant. Let this covenant. And this claim from this covenant. And this claim from this covenant. Now be annulled. Now be annulled. And now be revoked. Now be revoked. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And let every legal issue. And let every legal be issue. Be resolved in my favor. Be resolved in my favor. Lord, I'm asking. Lord, I'm asking. That the enemy would have no claim. The enemy would have no claim of ownership, of ownership over me, over me, or my family line, or my family line. Right now, right now, right now, Lord, right now, Lord. Let a, a decision be rendered. Let a decision be rendered that that causes every claim to be revoked and removed. That causes every claim to be revoked and removed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, when Jesus did that, then he touched her. So, Father, I say right now, oh, Rabbi, see, let your healing oh, no, anointing she flow. Can, into the lives of all these that are watching, all that sickness, all that disease, all that that hasn't seemed to move. Its legal claims are revoked, I decree right now, and I say that the healing anointing, the power of God just flow into your people and dries up every condition that would be against them, that they are made well and they are made whole in Jesus' name. 
I thank you for yes, doing Lord. this, Lord. Jesus. I thank you that spines are being made straight. Oh, yes. Lord, spines oh, are being myself. made straight. Yes. I thank you that lupus oh, dries up. Lupus. I hear dries the word up. lupus. I command lupus, go. go. You're right to remove fibromyalgia. You have no authority to Shilema. operate. Every arthritic and rheumatoid arthritis sta state, yes. I say the powers of it are broken it in the name of Jesus. Jesus and healing life. I say cancers leave bodies right now yes. in the name of Jesus. I say necks that are damaged are healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I say deafness, deafness, the yes. spirit of deafness yes. is removed it's and removed. hearing is restored. Oh. I say, I see lung disorders. I see uh, an incapacity oh, to, b b uh, to uh, breathe. Yes. I say the yes. healing life of God flows into those lungs and asthma and, and COPD and emphysema and every other disorder. It goes in the name of Jesus out from underneath the authority of God because legal rights have been revoked. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, saints, thank you for coming to this life-changing episode uh, with uh, Apostle Robert Henderson. This is Dr. Francis Miles, your host for Operating in the Courts of Heaven uh, TV show, and we love you. Until next time, shalom, shalom.